campaigning. The Egyptian Commission for Rights and Freedoms. The Egyptian Commission is one of the few human rights organizations still operating in a country which has waged an orchestrated campaign against independent civil society groups. Egypt is becoming increasingly hostile to dissent, but the Commission continues to provide advocacy, legal support and campaign coordination, drawing attention to the many ongoing human rights abuses under the autocratic rule of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. The government is trying to show that uh, things in Egypt have gone back to normal, but if anything, that we are heading into a transition towards dictatorship. Between 2016 and 2017, the Commission was instrumental in a campaign to stop and force disappearance. The group documented 378 cases of missing persons, many of whom were students. The cases of the disappeared are not reported in the heavily censored local media, and the Commission's websites and social media platforms are some of the few places their plights can be publicised, mapped and reported. These sites also chronicle the names of people who have been arrested during protests. Their work has seen them subject to state harassment. Their headquarters have been raided and staff members arrested. In an environment where many other organisations have had to step back or disappear altogether, they've managed to keep going. And that's just that, just that persistence over a period of time in a difficult environment is, is inspiring. The Commission is committed to carrying on with their work regardless of the challenges. And they say if everyone is silenced, this would be the ultimate gain to the current regime and the ultimate victory to Egypt's state of fear. Open Stadiums, Iran. The women behind Open Stadiums risk their lives to assert a woman's right to attend public sporting events in Iran. It's a daring campaign that challenges the country's political and religious regime. Iranian women face many restrictions on using public space. Swimming pools, schools, and even parks are gender segregated. But one of the most potent examples of their exclusion from public life is the prohibition on attending sporting events where men compete. Open Stadiums campaigns fiercely to build awareness on this issue. In 2017, the group used the easing of restrictions on public debate during presidential campaigning to publish 21 demands for women and to specifically push for them to be able to enter stadiums. They've generated a broad base of support for their cause, with many men posting photos of support online. The Iranian diaspora has also got involved, with placards and banners appearing at stadiums across the world. Last September finally saw the issue getting global media coverage, when despite having tickets, women were refused entry to Iran's Football World Cup qualifier against Syria. The incident was made more humiliating by the paradoxical decision to allow Syrian women into the stands. It's pushing for the most ordinary prosaic thing that everyone else in many parts of the world take for granted. And that takes real courage in an Islamic theocracy. As a result of Open Stadium's work, MPs and people in power are beginning to talk about a woman's right to attend sporting fixtures in a way that would have been taboo before. The National Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission, Kenya. The Commission is the only organisation in Kenya proactively challenging and preventing LGBTI discrimination through the country's courts. We have been threatened by the police that they will arrest us if we march, because they say that if we march we'll be promoting homosexuality. Uh, so we are still in conversation because we believe in dialogue. In Kenya, male homosexual acts are punishable by up to 14 years in prison. And while no specific laws relate to women, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga has said lesbians should be jailed. This criminal status for LGBTI Kenyans means that they suffer unchecked discrimination and have limited protection from threats, violence and blackmail. Set up in 2012 by six young legal advocates, the Commission has thrived in spite of setbacks such as legal challenges to acquiring their NGO status. The group has gone on to provide legal aid to the queer community on a national scale, as well as offering training to public officials and judges. Already making an impact, the charity has successfully lobbied MPs to scrap a proposed anti-homosexuality bill. And in September last year, they won agreement from the Kenya Medical Association to stop forced anal examination performed under the pretext of discovering crimes. They wanted to take us for checkup so that they can find more evidence. 
it was painful. It was painful. It was painful. Yeah. With three cases currently in court, the Commission is dedicated to achieving change by litigation to ensure legal precedent. They had to litigate through the uh, mechanism of the Constitution, the very rights for this organisation to exist. And for me, that shows particular resilience and determination. Their goal is to fully decriminalise the status of queer people and challenge entrenched prejudice. Team 29, Russia. Team 29 is an association of lawyers and journalists that defends those targeted by the state for exercising their rights to freedom of speech in Russia. It is crucial work in a climate where hundreds of civil society bodies have been forced to close and where increasingly tight restrictions have been placed on public protest and political dissent since mass demonstrations rocked Russia in 2012. Team 29 conducts about 50 court cases annually, many involving accusations of high treason such as the case of Oksana Sevastidi, who was sentenced to seven years in a penal colony for texting a friend about military equipment she saw near her home in southern Russia on the eve of the 2008 war with Georgia. Sevastidi's case was settled with a presidential pardon and led to Team 29 uncovering three more similar cases. Two of these defendants have now also been pardoned as a result of their advocacy, and the third is awaiting a verdict in the Supreme Court. Aside from litigation, they offer legal guides for activists, advice on what to do when the state security comes for you, and how to conduct yourself under interrogation. We are real patriots because we want good for our country. We want to bring her to the future, but not in the past. They're also taking on the Russian state to find out the fate of Raoul Wallenberg, the Swedish diplomat who saved tens of thousands of Hungarian Jews during the Holocaust, but was captured by Soviet intelligence and never seen again. What's timely is their use of both the legal system, but also the use of investigative journalism to expose some of the abuses that are going on within the Russian system. Team 29 continues to defend victims of the state, believing that everyone has the right to know what the government is doing, to tell other people about it, and to not end up in prison. <laughs>